Kiara Tata, Amihine Tafana, Kona Moana Fakalka, Tena Koto Katoa. My name's Rob Fenick, and it's my privilege to be the chairman of the Sustainable Seas National Science Challenge and to welcome you to this, the second conference of, uh, of the challenge. I'm particularly disappointed I can't be with you this morning as a result of a, a bit of turbulence on my health front, and I'm really sorry that I can't uh, catch up with so many of the people that I met at the, uh, at the conference last year. I know it's going to be a, a, a great conference. I'm delighted so many of you can return to the conference again this year. Uh, I know you're going to um, find the conference extremely interesting and, uh, and I hope gather many insights in our mutual quest for a more sustainable marine environment. We're about to sign up for the second stage of the challenge. And uh, this is a stage when we've got to make some real solid progress and some constructive outcomes of the work that we've done in stage one. And this relies as much on our research as it does on our engagement with you, all our stakeholders. What I'm talking about, of course, is kaitiakitanga. In all our extensive dialogues with stakeholders in the marine environment, whether they're commercial fishermen or recreational fishermen, whether they're involved in conservation or whatever. None have argued with the basic principle that the ocean's resources need to be preserved for future generations. The value of an agreed outcome has been shared by all. From a commercial fishing company that's just invested millions of dollars in a new vessel that needs a, a 20 year return on investment to grandparents dreaming of their grandchildren having the same joy of swimming and fishing as they did when they were children. The framework within which we try to administer and manage these competing interests uh, in the marine environment include legislation and law and protocols and quotas and of course Māori law that um, pervades across all these things. But the problem is that these things are often siloed and not integrated and nor are the agencies that administer them. From the challenges initial studies uh, we are convinced that the pathway to reconciling the differences between these silos is through the adoption of ecosystem-based management within the legislative and policy processes of the management of our marine environment. Because it's only through a shared understanding of the needs of ecosystems uh, that we can expect these competing interests to make the, the changes and compromises that are going to be needed to get an agreed outcome. Importantly, this challenge is aligned with the direction of travel of the current government that is looking at new measures for success of the New Zealand economy beyond the narrow lens of GDP. Many public and private sector leaders are looking beyond traditional quarterly reporting cycles to think about the importance of preserving natural capital for future generations to sustain the economy and our civil society. Treasury and the government have signalled this in their wellbeing framework for the 2019 budget. And of course this is closely aligned to what we're trying to do with ecosystem-based management in the, in, in the marine environment. It's not the role of the challenge to necessarily deliver EBM, but rather uh, to provide the evidence and the research that policymakers will need uh, to frame new policies that um, embed ecosystem-based management in future practices to be adopted to manage New Zealand's marine resources. And I can't impress enough to you the importance of the challenge partnering with central and regional government, uh, with Māori leaders, 
uh, with commercial uh, operators and of course with NGOs and, and recreational fishers because uh, you're all part of this family that needs to join up to deliver integrated policies and practices to, that give us a, an intergenerational solution to the protection of, of our marine resources. The newly created Fisheries New Zealand uh, division of, of MPI has uh, embarked on a review of the fishery and the, ultimately the review of the Fisheries Act and the Minister, the Honourable Stuart Nash, is on record as saying that ecosystem-based management uh, will lie at the heart of this review. And finally, a number of uh, far-sighted regional councils um, have adopted new regulations to manage land-based activities that are having an increasing impact uh, on the marine environment. For managers and policy makers, the adoption of EBM will uh, create an environment for holistic management structures. It'll reduce the prospect of conflict between competing interests and I believe will enhance transparency in the way in which we look at these policies. For communities, often in remote locations around the New Zealand coastline, the adoption of EBM will see greater participation uh, in the process of uh, policy making and see a greater respect for local and cultural values. For commercial operators, uh, ecosystem-based management will open new opportunities for growth as well as social license to operate. And for Māori, kaitiakitanga will be embedded in the principles of marine resource management. What really impressed me about the last conference was the way in which this whole uh, group of people uh, got together and shared ideas and listened to one another. So I implore you to take this opportunity uh, and to uh, come away from the conference with new insights in the way in which we can all work together towards ecosystem-based management uh, of the marine resource.